I'm Captain Edwards, and I'll be giving you your OPSEC training. Moving on, the purpose of this brief is to inform soldiers of the Idaho Army National Guard about the importance of OPSEC, or operation security, and the specific policy that applies to them being in the Idaho Army National Guard. Is define the OPSEC and the critical information and explain the differences between the CIL or critical information list and the CCIR which is the commander's critical information requirements and then also to provide requisite knowledge to safeguard critical information. All this information can also be found in AR 530-1. So moving on, by the end of this brief you'll be able to uh, answer all the following questions. What is the Idaho Army National Guard's critical information list, or CIL? And what is your unit's critical information list? What information am I responsible for protecting? How is the th threat trying to acquire this critical information? And what steps are we taking to protect this critical information? The other thing at the very end of this brief is uh, when you're with your units, you should be able to identify or whoever's uh, and your unit should be able to answer who your OPSEC officers are for your unit specifically. So bottom line is why is OPSEC important? Practicing OPSEC means protecting information that is sensitive or critical that someone could use to either hurt or kill soldiers, personnel, or their families, disrupt missions, exercises, or day-to-day -day activities, reduce overall unit strength and effectiveness, and profit at the expense of the government or individual persons. So OPSEC defined, and this can be a little bit complicated, so I'll explain it more at the end. So OPSEC, by definition, is the process of identifying critical information and subsequently analyzing friendly actions attendant to military operations and other activities to identify those actions that can be observed by adversary intelligence systems, determine indicators, and select apply OPSEC measures. Pretty much what this is saying is OPSEC is a process to build and identify a critical information list and what we need to do to protect that list. So critical information is items that develop the critical information list. The Idaho Army National Guard has 10 items that we're gonna talk about later in this brief. So critical information for each each topic is information important to the successful achievement of the U.S. objectives and missions or which may be used to the adversary of the United States. So essentially this, I, or this information is information adv adversaries or potential adversaries need to prevent our success, information that we must protect to ensure our own success, and then critical information is most often unclassified. So the responsibilities fall upon every single Idaho Army National Guard soldier, DOD civilian, DOD contractor, state employees. It falls under every single person of the Idaho Army National Guard to protect and safeguard these 10 items on the critical information list. This also, going back a slide, this also includes and understanding the Idaho Army National Guard's critical information list will be nested with your own unit's critical information list. Now your unit's critical information list will be nested with the overall Idaho Army National Guard. So make sure to understand that topic that your units will be nested in with what the state's overall is. This is why it's also important to know what ours is, but more importantly, what your units is, because each unit has certain things that they're trying to safeguard. So understanding that is very important. So going further into this, so we're gonna explain the difference between CIL and CCIRs. So CCIRs, or credit Commander's Critical Information Requirement. So this is pretty much time-sensitive information a commander needs to know in order to make a decision. So this is information that they're trying to get so that the commander can make a decision. Critical information list is information we essentially already know. We already have this information that, because it belongs to us, but we're trying to safeguard it, we're trying to protect it, and we don't want people to know about it. So understanding that concept, 
there's different types of threats, and we're going to go over what those threats are. So you have the typically it's broken down into two categories. So you have traditionals and you have non-traditionals. So traditionals are going to be pretty much your governments or your your different governments of the world. So with this one, insider threats going to involve like spies. It could essentially even be ourselves, um, individuals with unauthorized security clearances. Um, and then kind of goes back into foreign nations where you have hostile nations, you have non-hostile nations. Believe it or not, non-hostile nations try to obtain information from us, and a lot of times we don't want them to have that information. So just because another nation might not be hostile, we're still trying to restrict them because they're trying to get access to our information, and it's important that we guard them. So going into non-traditional now, a non-traditional when we're here in Idaho, these are going to be more of the threats that we're going to be focused on. So a lot of these, well, the first one's going to go into criminals. So you have hackers, pedophiles, uh, burglars, identity thieves. Typically, these type of people are going to be a lot more apt to try to get this information from you. Moving on, you have terrorists uh, for foreign countries. You have them from terrorists inside the United States. And then Certain ones that we're seeing quite a bit of now is obviously hate groups or gangs, um, extremists, extreme groups. A lot of these different individuals and groups are trying to get this information. So once again, it's imperative that we safeguard this information. So all of these threats, there's five main categories that these individuals are trying to collect this information. And we're gonna go over them. And this is gonna help us understand why we're guarding certain critical information lists. So the 10 items that we have for Idaho, it's gonna explain what people are wanting them and the methods they're using to collect them. So going through the five, so we have human, which is human intelligence. So this is gonna be pretty much your dumpster divers. This is gonna be uh, encounters when you're walking by and someone sees you. These are gonna be people that are observing you and watching you. Um, this can fall under people who are impersonating a person that that isn't actually who they are. Um, next category, SIGINT, which is uh, signals intelligence. And this is going to be telephones, cell phones, emails. It's their ability to hack into those systems and gather that information through uh, this method. You have GEONT, which is geospatial intelligence. Um, this is going to consist of Google Earth, um, imagery intelligence, radar images, information that you can collect on an imagery scale. Next one is going to be Massent, which is measurement and signature intelligence. So this is going to be such as like sonar or telemetry or uh, infrared. So that type of instrumentation used to collect information. And then the last one is OSINT, which is open source intelligence. This pretty much is social media, Facebook, Twitter, uh, the other ones that you have that you can go to library. So it's, it's pretty much information you can get anywhere. So with this, we're going to dive into our critical information list. Remember, there's 10 of them, and these, these 10 items is what you need to safeguard. This is what's important to remember. So when you go through, please write these down because this information is what you need to know. So the first one, the first item on the critical information list is training schedules and calendars. This is what we're trying to safeguard. So the biggest threat to this is going to be your local criminals, going to be hate groups, terrorists, hostile nations. Now, understand that the training schedules, this is, this is kind of a sensitive topic because certain people do need to have this information. For example, if you're uh, a, a typical soldier, you have to give this information to your employer. Now understand that this information needs to go to him and only him. It doesn't need to go to anyone else. So being able to tell your employee, hey, I'm gonna be gone this day, this day, and this day, it's important that they know that. They don't need to know what you're doing. They don't need to know, or the other employees don't need to know what you're doing. Because remember, a lot of times if you go to drill, that's gonna, understand that's going to be an opportunity for other people to come into your house which is why one of the threats is going to be local criminals if you're gone and they know that they know that they can go into your home at that point so something to remember how is this information collected it's going to be human OSINT and SIGINT 
All right, so critical, inform or critical information list item number two is gonna be unit manning rosters. Unit manning rosters, people don't need to know who's in the guard. They, they don't need to know all that information. So local criminals, once again, are gonna want this information, like identity thieves, that's, that's a perfect example. Hate groups, terrorists, hostile nations, these are gonna be your threats. Now, how's this collected? Uh, and you'll see through the collections, most of these are gonna be the same. Humant, OSINT, and SIGINT. Those are pretty much the main three. The, the other two forms is not seen so much, especially being here in Idaho, which we're trying to tailor this, this threat where we are currently at. So item number three is communication capabilities and status within the Idaho National Guard. Organized hate groups, terrorists, foreign nations, they want to know our communications abilities and it is imperative that we do not have them know what our method of communication is or how we, how we communicate or our capabilities of communicating. A lot of this information is gonna be done or received and collected by Humant, OSINT, SIGINT, and MASINT. Moving on to item number four, aviation operations flight schedules. Who wants this information? Essentially, this one's a little bit different. Enemy, enemy uh, combatants and hate groups are gonna want this information. Um, most of the time, it'll be collected by human or OSINT. Um, once again, this is information we wanna safeguard. People don't need to know about this information. Item number five is gonna be unit strength and readiness. Who wants this information? Foreign governments. Notice how it's not hostile nations, it's other governments. So remember this, just because another country uh, we might be friends with, a lot of times we don't want other countries to know this information. Uh, how's it collected? Human, OSINT, and SIGINT, once again. Item number six, equipment capabilities, vulnerabilities, limitations, and status. Uh, the individuals wanting this information is going to be enemy combatants and hostile nations. Uh, human and OSINT will be the collection method. Item number seven, Privacy Act information and personally identifiable information, or PII. This information is going to be given, th this is going to cover a lot more threat levels, which is why you always hear about safeguarding PII. Um, a lot of people are going to try to get this information. So local criminals, identity thieves, hate groups, terrorists, hostile nations, everyone wants to know your information. The reason why is because they can exploit you very easily with this information. The main method in which it's collected is going to be Humant, OSINT, and SIGINT. Item number eight, arms, ammunition, explosives, and sensitive items storage receiving and transportation information. Who wants this information? Local criminals. Uh, criminals would love to have a grenade if they could have one, I'm sure. So understand that certain items, we need to make sure that we do not get this out to the public. Hate groups and terrorists are another, uh, uh, obviously more threats that would want this, this, um, this information so they could use it against us. Uh, how's it collected? Human innocent. Item number nine, deployment information. Who wants this information? Local criminals, terrorists, hostile nations. How's this information collected? Humant, OSINT, that's a big one, and SIGINT. Item number 10, security procedures. So pretty much the, the people that are wanting this information would be local criminals, terrorists, hostile nations, and then normally it's uh, collected by Humant, OSINT, and SIGINT. Now, going through those 10 items, understand that you have to be careful giving this information. Obviously, we're trying to safeguard it, but understand that you have to be, certain people might need to know some of this information. For example, maybe spouses. Um, spouses, I'm sure they're gonna wanna know when your deployments are. So that might be a point where you could explain it to your wife, but you need to be able to explain to them that this is information that shouldn't be pushed out. Now, understand that other organizations in the Idaho Army National Guard are authorized to release some of this information, but you and the Idaho Army National Guard are not. 
So understand that even though some information might be released by the public affairs office or other organizations, you do not have the authority to release this information unless it's with your significant other and it's gonna be kept close to you. Um, this will also help families so on, uh, prepare for when you're gone. Um, and like I say, you gotta be flexible with some of them. So for, for example, training calendars, obviously employees do need, or employers, do need to know when you're going to go, but once again, you need to safeguard that as much as possible because other people don't need to know when you're going to be gone. Now, the measures that we're going to be taking to protect this information is obviously when you get this information, obviously there's a lot of communication going back and forth. We need to make sure that our measures to protect this information, we're going to go down a list right now of what you can do to safeguard this information. The first one that we have is going to be obviously shred policy. If you have information and it's there, we need to shred it or destroy what, what information is there. Measure number two, uh, encrypted transmission of emails. So the reason why the military has its own email system is because anytime you send an email, that information is encrypted. It's harder for other organizations or entities to be able to hack in to that, that information that's getting passed around. So understand that maybe your Gmail accounts or Hotmail accounts or whoever you have, understand that that method of disseminating information isn't authorized because it's not encrypted, but your military email is. That's why for individual soldiers, it's imperative and important that you make sure you have developed your military email accounts because most of the time, all the time, or I shouldn't say all the time, most of the time, information is going to be transmitted to you through your military email account. The reason for this is to safeguard this information. So for a lot of you new soldiers, understand that concept. You need to get your military email up and going, and you also need to make sure that you're accessing it regularly. This goes into DOD share drives and other, other encrypted um, methods of transmitting this information. Measurement number three, area situational awareness when communicating. So you could be talking on the phone and talking to another soldier or communing with your boss or your, your, um, your command about information going on, but you might be out in the public and other people might be he overhearing your conversation. So be mindful of your surroundings. This even goes to just open conversations that you have. Um, be aware and understand your surroundings because sometimes people talk too loud and it's easy for voices to carry on. So just be mindful of that. The other one I want to talk about is social media. It is so easy and everyone nowadays wants to tell me what type of a hamburger they're eating. I would care less. But bottom line is it's very easy nowadays for people to say, hey, I'm doing this in the guard, look at me. That normally is information you don't want to release openly every time. So there, there's precautions. We actually have a policy in regards to social media. Bottom line is don't share this information on social media. It's very easy to do so, and I'm just saying it's important that you safeguard this information when you communicate. Measure number four, authorized personnel only in sensitive areas. That includes civilians. A lot of times you don't need civilians doing their own thing in our armories or just in certain areas, so just be mindful of that. Just be. Just be aware of where people are at and whether or not they have the, the, the authorization to be in that location. Measure number five, has OPSEC training completed every new, or OPSEC traded completing to every single new Idaho Army National Guard soldier, DOD contractor, DOD civilian, every single person needs to have OPSEC training within 30 days of coming into the Idaho Army National Guard. That is a policy and we need to make sure we keep enforcing that. And then moving on, obviously pushing the annual OPSEC security or OPSEC training, making sure we're doing that every single year. Um, and then the last one is what we've kind of been going through and the, the 10 items is just making sure you know what the critical information list is. So understand once again, this is the information list that we just went over is the Idaho Army National Guard as a whole understand that your unit might have slightly different versions of that information list. So make sure that after this briefing, you get with your OPSEC officer 
and you learn what your unit's critical information lists. A lot of them might be similar or the same, but they probably will be slightly different. For example, a line unit that's in the 2116 might not really care about uh, the, the flight patterns that the 183rd is doing. So understand that might be a little bit different. So like I say, make sure that you're tracking what your own unit's critical information list is. So summarizing everything and kind of wrapping it all up at the very end, OPSEC is a process by which an organization identifies, controls, and protects its critical information. Potential adversaries come in many different forms. Uh, not all of them are wanting to hurt you or kill you, but understanding a lot of times they're trying to take advantage of the military or you and trying to steal that information that will benefit them and hurt you or the Idaho Army National Guard. And then it is the responsibility of everyone in the unit to be familiar with your critical information list, the Idaho Army National Guard's critical information list, and comply with the commander's OPSEC plan. So whatever plan's in place, you need to make sure that we're trying to safeguard that information. That's pretty much what I have for the OPSEC portion. Uh, the last thing that I wanted to show you is just my contact information. So uh, I'm obviously over the Idaho Army National Guard OPSEC program, so I'm the program manager, but understand that each battalion, each unit is gonna have their own OPSEC officer. So make sure that you reach out and find out who your OPSEC officer is for the brigade. Uh, since this is going out to the brigade, the OPSEC program manager for the brigade is going to be Sergeant First Class Robert Anderson. Now understand there's going to be other OPSEC officers going into the other battalions. Uh, once again, just be mindful of that. Um, so at this time, make sure uh, if units, this time go ahead and make sure that uh, you're, you you relay this information to your soldiers on who your OPSEC officers are and what methods soldiers can be able to contact those individuals. This is all I have. Thank you so much for your time.